Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and a look at the Jenny sweater by Petite Knit. So this Jenny sweater, I kind of feel like is my magnum opus. Um, I had purchased the pattern last year at the same time as getting the Moby. Um, and my idea is that I just, you know, I was going to make more textured sweaters this year. Uh, but then when I started really digging into it, it just felt like it was too much to take on. Um, and I sort of just forgot about it. Then I decided after having multiple false starts on three or four different sweaters in a row uh, that it was time to pick it up because I already had the yarn for it and the pattern. So it was just easy. I knew what it was going to do. So the yarn that I had chosen is Drops Kid Silk in the color, I believe this is North Sea, and then Drops Flora in the color Sea Green. Um, so they, these are, even though they don't have the same exact name, um, I think that they're pretty close for you color match for each other. Of course, the Flora is an alpaca wool blend, and this is mohair and silk. As usual, I found the pattern or yardage estimates in the pattern grossly over estimated what you needed. I ended up using seven skeins of both of these. Uh, I knit it to the full length and I added an extra 24 rows to the sleeves as well. So I actually knitted more than the pattern says to do and still I was multiple skeins under um, what it said I should have used up. So this sweater is knit from the bottom up. That's one of my least favorite ways to knit a sweater because I find it really hard to tell how long I need to get my sleeves to be. Um, petite knit does not include any sort of schematics in her pattern. So I didn't know how long that arm whole depth was going to be, if it was going to be really close up or, or further down, um, which of course depends <laughs> It really impacts how long you need your sleeve to be based on the depth of the yoke. Um, so I just sort of guessed this is one of these things where you had to do, if you wanted to make your sleeve longer, you had to go through 12 rounds in order to get back into the place in the smocking pattern so that you would have that smooth, continuous um connection with the body when you knit the two together. So for I did 12 rounds extra and I held it up and it's like, oh, I still don't think it's enough. So I did another 12 rounds extra for 12, 24 extra rounds. And I felt like that would probably it. Um, I think it could stand to be just a tad shorter, but like I said, not 12 rows shorter. So I'm glad I went with as many as I did. Uh, this project takes forever to knit. Uh, it is a fingering held with a mohair, which is a combination I use a lot, which generally gives me a DK gauge. But this sweater is almost entirely knit in a two by two rib, essentially, with those smocking details added. I believe the body was something like 300, 400 stitches somewhere in there, um, which is crazy. I have never in my life knit that many stitches around the body. And then once you got to the yoke, forget about it. So many stitches. So it was easily like two or three X more stitches than I'm used to working. And even though there's so many more stitches, even at that DK weight, um, it's not that big on me. It's not that oversized. Obviously there still is some extra room uh, in the bust and in the waist and stuff like that. But I think that the smocking really sort of like cinches stuff in. So you don't really get that effect of like this big voluminous sweater. Um, it could stand to stretch out more and you get more of that diamond shape, or it sort of like snugs back into your body if you don't have it pulled out like that. So it took me forever. I decided I wasn't gonna knit it all in one go. So I kind of went like little chunks at a time. I'd spend a week on this and then work on a different sweater. And then I spent a week on this and then finish a different sweater. So it took me over the course of two months to make this sweater, but not two months of actual knitting time. I think I spent 22 days of actual knitting time on this sweater, which is about double what I normally spend um, just to get an idea of time. Uh, I think a lot of people would have spent a lot longer on the sweater if they're not a fast knitter. So this one, as I said, bottom up on the body and then bottom up on the sleeves, then joining it and then moving up into these raglan shaping. I really 
appreciated the fact that the designer wrote out all of the like decreases for the raglan row by row by row. Uh, I would never have been able to keep that track in my head because you have like a different um, decrease frequency for the, the body side versus the sleeve side. Um, and then like figuring out how to like do the smocking and all that integrated into the raglan stitches would have been much too hard. I'm really glad she went row by row and held your hand. Uh, and that's also true of the sleeves as well. Uh, the decreases on the sleeves were really quite challenging. And again, those are all done row by row. So you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing. And I think it gives a really nice clean result on the inside where those decreases happen and sort of like converge and mix the smocking stitches together. Because of the nature of the texture of this, that like two by two ribbing with smacking, this is a really, really warm sweater. I am absolutely dying right now of heat exhaustion, but uh, I think in the summer I or in the winter, I'll definitely appreciate it. Um, but it's, it's sort of like a thick, nice, very warm sweater. I do really think that the finishing details on this were superb. I loved the way that you have this ribbing, which is, I think it's a two by one ribbing. And then you sort of like add extra stitches and it sort of moves seamlessly into that sort of smocking detail. It means that you have a lot of room in your hip here, and then you have enough increases that it sort of like works seamlessly moving from the smocking to the regular ribbing. Um, and so I think that's a really nice detail and it looks really clean and pretty. Like I said, I think that the raglan detail on this is really nice. It has like a three stitch wide raglan on here with the decreases coming on either side, coming up to the neck. There is sort of like a dropped front to the neck. So you, you, you work flat at the very, very end to sort of bring the back up. And then I think you pick up and you do a, is this a folded? Yeah, this is a folded collar in two by two ribbing. So really enjoy how this looks. I think it took me a really long time. So I appreciate the skill that went into it. My hands were aching at the end. I'm glad it's finished. And I'm really glad I can add it to my wardrobe and be very proud if somebody mentions anything, I can be like, hey, I made that. I was sort of upset that I think it was like the day I finished the sweater, she came out with the Jenny V-neck cardigan. And I much would have rather done a v-neck cardigan uh, in this particular pattern just because at the time she just had a high neck cardigan which I wasn't that interested in but v-neck I would have been much more interested in but I don't think there is any universe in which I will be taking on the smock stitch again so unfortunately the v-neck cardigan is one that I'm going to have to admire from afar. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Jenny sweater by Petite Net and I'll see everyone next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.